Hey everybody, I'm Jay Privman along with Marty McGee. It's time for yet another Derby Watch update as we get closer and closer to the Kentucky Derby. And Marty, first off, let's take a look at the current top 20 list. We had to do quite a bit of surgery because a number of horses who had Derby designs are out after the Travers and the Ellis Park Derby last week. We brought in six newcomers, but I thought the most significant thing is that Tis the Law has solidified his favoritism even further on your line. Uh, why don't you let everybody know what you've done? Well, he needed to win like he did to go down to six to five, which is where I have him. He was even money, Jay, in the pool seven that closed on Sunday uh, for the uh, Churchill Downs future wager. Uh, right behind him, Art Collector at five to one, Honor AP at six to one. Everybody else is double digits, starting with Authentic. And a thousand words. Then we have four horses, excuse me, three horses at 20 to one, four at 30 to one, and then eight of them, including six newcomers or returnees uh, at 50 to one uh, here in the Derby Watch Top 20. So that's our current list and the races that impacted that list that were run last weekend were the Travers and the Ellis Park Derby. Let's start with the Travers. Obviously, this is the most significant of the final races leading up to the Kentucky Derby. The favorite, Tis the Law, another impressive win following up his Belmont Stakes victory. Marty's four for four this year, and to me, he's just getting better and better. I, I thought he was much the best here. Fast buyer fig. Not much you can pick apart here. He's he's the deserving favorite. What did you think of his race? No, and Manny Franco really didn't have to ask him for much, through, maybe through a, a, a new cross or two, but... Uh... The horse really dug in, ran off from, from the competition. He's now, as you said, four for four this year. His last loss having come here, um, his only loss having come here at Churchill Downs, so which is going to be a subject of, going to be a topic of conversation that the only race he ran at the side of the Derby was uh, was a defeat last year in the Kentucky Jockey Club. But yeah, he, you know, they all look good when they, when they win by five and a half, Jay. And uh, like you said, he got a real high buyer number, 109, the highest yet for any of these three-year-olds. So he's clearly, strictly the one to beat in Derby 146. And one thing we won't hear people asking this year, Marty, leading up to the Kentucky Derby is, can the favorite handle a mile and a quarter? <laughs> he he kind of answered that the other day in the Travers, not that there was much doubt about it, uh, the way he had been running in races at a mile and an eighth. Uh, behind Tis the Law... The second and third place finishers are both on our Derby Watch Top 20. Both are heading on to the Kentucky Derby. Cara Caro finished second. Max Player finished third. And big news regarding Max Player coming out of the race just a couple of days later. He was transferred from Linda Rice to Steve Asmussen. All that said, Marty, what were your impression of the performances of those two that finished behind Tis the Law? Well, they both ran on as opposed to some of the others in there, most notably not uh, Uncle Chuck, who dropped out of the Derby scene. But... Kara Caro, there was some concern whether he would bounce off that big effort he had in the Peter Pan uh, off, of, off a lengthy layoff, but uh, he ran just as well, if not better. So he's one of the fringe players in Derby 146. And then Max Player um, coming from the Withers all the way to the Belmont and then the Travers. Those two races for Linda Rock, Rice were pretty good, and uh, uh, he's going to head real soon here to Kentucky to, to train for Steve Asmussen over the local course. Yeah, and I thought she did a terrific job with the horse. He was a horse who earlier this year I thought was a significant cut below the best. And I thought his last two races were showing real signs of improvement and moving the right way. So uh, we'll see if Max Player can keep on that forward trajectory heading into the Kentucky Derby. And as Marty said, Cara Caro, my concern on him was if he would regress off that big comeback race he had uh, in the Peter Pan, but he certainly didn't. Uh, he ran another good race, and he deserves to go on to the Derby. Marty, the second choice on your line for the Derby also ran last weekend. He's also four for four this year. That's Art Collector. He won the Ellis Park Derby on Sunday. You were there. Tell me what you thought of his race. Yeah, it was my first time at a racetrack in almost five months, Jay. It's the wow. longest span I've had since I was about 11. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun to be there, and it was fun to see both Tommy Drury and Brian Hernandez and uh, Bruce Lunsford, the owner breeder of Art Collector, savoring, relishing the victory that they had. The horse was just as impressive, I thought, uh, as Tis the Law in winning at the Travers. We're going to have a Midwest versus East matchup, it looks like, with maybe a little California thrown in when the uh, Honor AP gets here for the Derby. So it uh, makes for a very interesting rivalry. I love the way this horse goes. I know for sure. Usually I don't make my pick until I'm 
gun to the head Monday before the Derby, but uh, I'm all in on Art Collector. I'm a big fan, and I love the way he used this race uh, as a stepping stone four weeks out. Yeah, it's a real nice uh, prep for him after running in the Bluegrass Stakes. They had debated whether or not to have another race in between, and I don't think you could have asked for a more perfect race to as a bridge to go from the Bluegrass onto the Kentucky Derby than what we saw from Art Collector on Sunday in the Ellis Park Derby. Marty, let's talk about a couple of horses who finished behind him in this race who are intended to go on to the Kentucky Derby. Second place finisher, Attachment Rate. Third place finisher, Necker Island. Uh, I'll go first here on Attachment Rate. I thought this was a really good effort for him. His, his best yet, he kind of took the scenic route the whole way around the race course. And he had every right, I thought, to give it up uh, coming through the lane, but he kept to his task. and. Certainly, he's not at the level of a tis the law or an art collector, but I thought it was an encouraging race for him. What did you think? Absolutely. Joe Talamo got off of him and was had his big eyes like, wow, that was really a, a, an encouraging run. And, you know, a few minutes after the race, I asked Dale if he would go on to the Derby. And <laughs> Dale tried to play it cool, but I thought, who are you kidding? Of course, you're going to run the Derby if you can. So, uh, you know, this horse has stair-stepped his way up into contention, into fringe-level type, type of contention, Jay. So uh, I think more so than some of the other horses uh, who might run in the Derby, I think he really kind of belongs. And Necker Island finished third in the race. He was a claim a couple of starts back. He certainly has proven to be a worthwhile claim, but he's one of those horses, Marty, who looks like he's really going to be taking a, a shot in the derby uh, a long shot at, yeah. at that uh, i thought it was a good performance on his part but there's oh, plenty others i like better than him what did you yeah, think of his race yeah, yeah he's proven himself uh you know that he's a cut under the tis the laws etc so i take the over under on him be like 13th in the derby jay <laughs> uh there's one other point scoring race on the road to the derby uh, to wrap up this elongated derby season that's this saturday it's the pegasus at monmouth that race was scheduled to be drawn today wednesday as we're taping this the only horse on our current derby watch top 20 scheduled to run in that race marty uh, is pneumatic who by my mind is more of a middle distance horse and this race being only three weeks out not really sure we're going to get any significant derby contenders out of here what are your thoughts on this race well i mean if pneumatic were to go on a win by six or so uh, maybe that would encourage the uh winchell thoroughbreds and steve aspies and go on a running back in the derby but i think they're just kind of they're they're kind of wait and see on that so they've been like that for a number of weeks so uh, so ever since the belmont so we'll, we'll see what happens with that but uh, i think overall to your point jay it's it's not a major prep we're pretty much finished with those and that race is only worth 20 points to the winner, 32 points overall. Well, that's our look at the races that impacted the Derby Watch Top 20. Make sure you come back here to DRF.com all the way leading up to the Kentucky Derby on September the 5th. And Marty and I will be here with regularity giving you Derby Watch updates. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Pridman. Thanks for watching.